All right, look at that blue skies. It's been amazingly crap weather here in Sydney. Brand new MT-10, my mate's uh, Yamaha chariot there. Loves it, he's actually super fast around the track, so we'll let him off. The Majesty 400, yes. We're just getting the GoPros boot up. So we are just uh, basically going for a quick spin around the uh, the burbs of Sydney, go have a coffee, a catch up. We haven't ridden together in 10 years. Brand new MT-10, got this cool Ford Wild Track Ranger from Ford. Thanks Ford, you guys are awesome. And the uh, latest model MT-09, a bike that I am yet to ride. I've ridden the uh, the Nikon as you've seen, but um, these are a, a pretty cool thing. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd look at it as being the ultimate perfect daily, sporty, comfortable, probably, uh, you know, I shouldn't say this on camera, but good for wheelies on private property. And um, yeah, just a nice looking bike and not mega bucks either. So we'll take him out for a spin. I'm gonna let uh, Wade take the big boy bike out first because uh, he's an R1 Tragic from way back. So there's the heart of an R1 in it. And uh, yeah, we'll uh, hit the road. Don't forget to zip up your pockets. I do like the sound of a three cylinder motorbike. They are very cool sounding. All right, off we go. Didn't bring my sunnies on my tinted visor though, but uh, here you get that. Should have bought my tinted visor. We are in Wetherill Park in Sydney home of Yamaha headquarters and um, about a billion and other one businesses around here. And uh, even more trucks, trucks everywhere. So you've got to be very careful around here, especially on a motorbike, because they don't look or indicate. You want one yet? Yeah, they are a wicked looking bike. It's an interesting feeling riding this. The seat's super, super comfortable. But um, the one thing you notice is um, the seat on it's almost like a motocross seat. You're not exactly sure where to sit, but um, that's not a bad thing because it kind of gives you the variety of being able to move around a bit. But um, such a nice little engine in this thing. I do like it. So smooth, this is humming along at 80 k's an hour, three grand. All right, so this is the main reason we've got these two bikes out today, other than the fact that the weather's been total ass in Sydney and, um, and you know, terrible for riding bikes. I mean, yeah, I don't mind riding in the rain, but, you know, as you get older, you just get lazier and like, oh, I don't want to get wet, sit around in wet clothes all day. But, um, yeah, so Sydney traffic can be quite soul-destroying because the fact that you are stuck in bumper to bumper. It's moving all right at the moment. We are on the M7, the new loop road, or new, I say that, new 10, 15 years ago, or whatever, that connects the M2 to the M5. Uh, awesome bit of gear, this road, um, apart from all the tolls. But uh, yeah, so we're currently sitting on 66 k's an hour, stuck behind a truck in a 100 zone. But then when the traffic bump uh, banks up, then that's when we can actually uh, make the most of the lane splitting rules and um, and filter our way through legally and uh, which is good in most states have started doing that now um, obviously lane filtering does piss a lot of car people off but um, it shouldn't really because they need to think about the um, the safety of uh, motorbike riders um, some of them um, some of them uh, that was my mate Danny um, yeah, some of them don't like uh, bike riders doing it because they're like, oh, that's not fair, but um, really on a bike you're so much more vulnerable than a car. And my whole theory of going to the front of the lights, lane splitting at a set of traffic lights, is not to be a hero so you get out in front of all the cars like a, you know, GP start. It's basically just so that you're not stuck in amongst a whole bunch of cars. Nobody wants to be in and around 10 cars where there's people vaguely driving, some using their phone, some not really caring, some not even taking any notice of any motorbikes around here. Worse even, and it's a tricky one too, worse even if you're riding a fairly standard bike like this, 
with a quiet exhaust on it because then they can't hear you. But um, yeah, no, I mean this bike here and um, we'll swap over with Wade soon and jump on the MT-10. I think he'll really enjoy this as well. It is quite blustery today as you can tell. Got the GoPro on the top of the helmet so the thing is a mini sail. Um, I'm quite keen to see how this footage comes out now as well. We've done a bit of stuff with the Hero 7s but this is the first one I've got my hands on so and a little red light still on so we're recording. But um, yeah, I think um, uh, you know, from what I've been told, I haven't looked at the sales figures and stuff like that and to be brutally honest, I've said it a thousand times, I'm not that kind of journal, I don't get into the nitty gritty of sales figures and specifications and everything, it's all more about my personal opinion about riding bikes, speaking of which, there's a, uh, a policeman on a Yamaha, um, yeah, it's more about my personal opinion, you know, I've ridden a few bikes, I'm not the best rider in the world, I'm certainly not the worst, so, um, on the other hand, uh, Wade and I, our background together as mates, is um, we both uh, got into a bit of stunt riding a while ago. He was um, he was racing and doing track days and stuff like that, so a way more um, talented rider than I am. And now he's um, doing training with the uh, very cool Bernie Hatton, the top rider training. And um, yeah, Wade's um, Wade's a gun on a bike. Like he can go out and take a crappy old CBR 600 and go and mix it up with guys on new 600s and stuff like that. He's just very talented, good rider, very modest. But uh, yeah, total, total Yamaha nerd. He doesn't like to admit it, but um, yeah. It's nice that this um, truck is keeping left. It's, it's really polite of him. Wayne Cove Tunnel. And uh, Lane Cove Tunnel, Sydney, and we are cruising through doing one of these vloggy style things like all those other million and one motorcycle vloggers. Don't even know if the camera is facing the ceiling or not, but um, got my mate Wayne there with his nice little cute ankles cruising down on the uh, MT10. I'm on the MT09. Really dig this bike. It is. Um, it's nimble, it's quick, it's comfortable, everything's nice about it. Got plenty of power, sounds great. It's um it's not hard to see why. It's not hard to see why people love these things. Um and you know, value for money, they're a brilliant bike too. And um yeah, I mean uh, from what I've been told by the local Yamaha dealer where I am, Coast Yamaha, they said their sales of the MT models, MT7 right through to 10 have been awesome so uh, yeah it's um it's definitely uh, been a good thing for Yamaha to do Wayne's just sort of scooting around me filming me at the moment looking amazing in my Ixon jacket and uh, Ixon jeans and Falco boots thanks to Fasita got my shark helmet on I actually really love this helmet the more I wear it the more I love it and um, I mean that goes without saying anyway you know new helmets always take a bit of bedding in but this thing um, it just fits me like a glove, it's nice getting on and off, doesn't rip your ears off. Uh, got the extra space I've mentioned before for my glasses to slide in nicely. Um, yeah, great helmet. I've worn it um, uh, in the UK, Isle of Man. Uh, I've raced in it, commuted in it, I've driven um, cars in it. And um, yeah, and it still looks mint. Just got to... Um, Keep it looking fresh. I like to look after my helmets. Uh, they are a disposable item, but um, they are also something that if you treat them nice, um, you, know, you can keep them for as long as they uh, stick around for. I mean, I've had um, tons of helmets and uh, had shelves full of helmets and stuff like that, but um, yeah, you always look after your current helmet, even if it is down to changing visors and stuff like that. But um, yeah, enough of my waffle. I'm going to stop this camera and start it up again in a minute and you'll see why. Okay, fingers crossed this camera's recording. Better slow down to tiny bit. Alright. Yeah, fingers crossed this camera's recording. Now we are going on to what I like to think is the most iconic piece of Sydney. The uh, very bumpy old school Sydney Harbour Bridge. Look at that. Absolutely awesome. It's one of my favourite parts of Sydney. Um, the traffic, not so much, but it does move. They have the security guys there, always monitoring stuff. 
But um, yeah, it's just, I am yet to do the bridge climb actually. But um, yeah, let's just go through here and have a look at this awesome, awesome bit of gear. It's um, uh, 100 years old, if I'm not incorrect. But you just take it all in. Coming under here on a bike or in a convertible car is the coolest because you just look up and you're like, wow, look at that thing. It's just so old, all the rivets and steel. It's just monumental. I mean, there's some pretty amazing bridges in the world. I even um, went across the Humber Bridge up to Hull in the UK. That's pretty amazing too. But yeah, as far as bridges goes, it's pretty iconic. So um, yeah, welcome to Sydney. It's a pretty awesome grand entrance coming across there. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna shoot down into the rocks, I think, and uh, carve up through there, have a look under the bridge, because it's pretty cool. and. Um, Maybe stop, swap over bikes, have a chat, and yeah, go from there. Rocks! It's an absolute fiasco, this George Street. Used to love cruising down to the rocks down George Street. It was just an epic, nice piece of road. and. Now Sydney has absolutely trashed it. I don't know who's to blame, but I got told that there was some construction company involved and it all got messed up and now it's a total shambles. Oh well, they'll fix it one day. Oh, very cool. Love you, Sydney. Pretty good. G'day, mate. Sydney Opera House, Sydney Harbour Bridge, MT10. MT-09. Okay. All right, in double chin mode. Squinty Sydney Harbour Bridge. It is uh, Wednesday. Wednesday, yeah. It's Wednesday, day three in Sydney. Uh, came down here, got a few people to meet and see and stuff like that. Catch up with my old mate Wade there. Um, going to the Superbikes this weekend at Wakefield. Very much looking forward to that. So as part of this week, um, had a chat with the guys from Yamaha. Said I wanted to go out and do some riding um, and really wanted to do something on the MT-09 and the MT-10. Both of these bikes, super cool bikes to ride around town. Um, you can take them up in the hills, have heaps of fun on them, but you know, just comfortable, easy to ride. The MT-09 is just a blast. It's just smooth, simple to ride, comfortable, the seating position, the bars, the mirrors, everything just works. Um, only things I'd change on it is your typical stuff that you do when you buy a bike anyway. It's probably changed where the rear hugger sits. That's only an ADR thing anyway. Um, obviously put an exhaust on it, some different rear sets and bits and pieces, but um, as a factory package, pretty cool. And I mean, you know, when warranties run out and stuff like that, then you can go and see awesome people like Ben from Extreme Creations and throw a turbo on it. But um, yeah, as a standard package, pretty awesome bike. Um, I am about to have a ride on the MT-10 in a minute. So this, this here, so the water down R1 engine. And um, yeah, I'm just gonna quickly go over and see Wade see what he thinks of it so far. What do you think of the MT-10? What's it ride like? Comfort, all that sort of thing, power? Comfortable, torquey, pretty short-footed. Um, soaks up the bumps. Uh, you still feel connected with the road. Holds its line. Just a pleasure to ride in all respect. It brakes fantastically. It's got really, really good braking power. And the KYB forks are, um, there's something else. It's, it's not something that you would have to buy from the showroom and then take down to a suspension guy and spend thousands of dollars on it's quite confident and confident confident and, and just comfortable and as a rider i mean you're not just some everyday schmuck rider i mean you know riding motorbikes can be anyone anyway like doesn't matter what level of riding but you've had a fair bit of experience i mean what do you what do you do when you when you're not doing your normal job i, I cruise around on a scooter during the week um don't want to jump on a sports bike on the road all the time uh, we can all appreciate uh, that that can get us into trouble. As it's the rescue helicopter comes over top. 
Always a way. There's always a helicopter around. Yeah. So, but um, yeah, with Bernie Hatton, I mean, uh, tell me a bit about that and some of your racing. Oh, look, we've just been doing some ride coaching for uh, for Top Rider Australia with Bernie Hatton. Uh, great little um, fraternity and, and family there. Um, you know, on some of the weekends we get out there, we've got uh, the likes of Glenn Scott and Ant West, and we all sort of get together and just share uh, what we know and what we can pass on, but just uh, share a great time on the motorcycles uh, uh, all together. Um, obviously more sports orientated out there, but we get a whole variety of bikes, and um, the MT09s have been quite popular on the track as well. We get a lot more people coming out with these sorts of bikes because they do everything well. Um, you know, they, they corner, they brake, they accelerate, the amount of power we're getting out of them. So uh, we, we're seeing more sports touring and aggressive sports touring bikes come out of the track, uh, even more so now, uh, which is a great thing. They're a great all-rounder. Something that you can have a bit of fun on the weekend, something you can go for a long tour. Um, there's no shortage of power and speed. You can still get into trouble on them, uh, but uh, you know, every other day riding, brilliant. Cool. Sydney Harbour Bridge, anywhere in the rocks, and we just happened to come across a DeLorean. Look at that. As you do, just uh, cruising around to our mates from the UK. One that lives here, one's visiting. Well, they go out for a spin, see if they can hit 88 miles an hour across a bridge. So, can I do a quick uh, interview with you? Yeah, sure. Two seconds. Uh, who are you, where are you from, and what the hell did you uh, buy a DeLorean for? So, my name's Tim. I'm from Sydney, originally from the UK. Um, why not? That was it, really, to be quite honest. I always promised myself when I got to a certain point, I bought myself a DeLorean and bought myself a DeLorean. And it's pretty epic. It's, I mean, slow, but it's a good, great car. And people keep stopping like you to say, hey, I've never seen a DeLorean, so why so, not? Well, I've seen a few. Uh, I've been around the car scene for a long time, magazines and stuff like that. But um, give me, I'm going to do this on camera. Give me your top three quotes from the first movie. Um, roads. <laughs> Where we're going, we don't need roads. Um, I'm, not, I'm not a huge Back to the Future oh, fan. On, I'm more of a fan of the car and John how DeLorean. Many, how, many, how many gigawatts? Uh, 1.22, I 1.21. think. 1.21. 1.21, yeah. And uh, yeah, I can't think of any more. Marty, great Scott. <laughs> awesome car, man. That's no so problem, cool. Thanks. So they've got full traction control, ABS, quick shifters, everything. All the electronics in the world. Yamaha, yeah, you're. Uh company after my heart even though there's traffic up ahead. The microphone's still there. Audio should hopefully be good. Otherwise I've been recording crap the whole time. Alright, cruise control on. Well, that was a pretty uh, short loop down to Bondi Junction and back through the city. Carved up a bit of traffic in the city. It was a bit chaotic in there. Um, George Street's an absolute disaster in Sydney City. But um, yeah, I've got uh, Wade up ahead there. He's on the uh, MT-09, I'm on the MT-10. He's getting past this truck here. Got the cruise control on, same as the Nikon, so awesome. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a really interesting, um, I wouldn't say comparison, because these two bikes, even though they carry the MT, they're so incredibly different and um, so good in their own right. I mean, um, hopefully this audio is not too bad, because it's pretty blustery today, but um, yeah, the MT-09, Bang for buck, awesome bike. Um, not that expensive to buy in the grand scheme of things for a brand new bike. Um, very punchy, very nimble, super comfortable. Um, sounds great, looks great, and uh, and a pretty good crossover from you know from a learner bike into something with a bit of grunt. So um, you know they don't take a lot of setting up to handle nicely as well, four cartridges that sort of thing. But um, yeah, stepping up to the MT10, it's it's a, a, I wouldn't say an aggressive bike, it's it's more of a, a powerhouse bike. It's got the, the the heart of an R1, 
uh, lower compression I believe um, but it's a very sure footed comfortable bike would be awesome to ride this uh, long distance uh, it's got the big bang engine so it sounds fantastic all the nice electronics it looks great I really dig the headlight on this got a real transformers thing going on about 500 kilowatts in the wet on bold tires it feels like 500 kilowatts 